And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Even though Bridgetown Races has the word races in the title, and even though the game is a race, I'm not sure that I would take this to someone and say, hey, do you want to play a race game? Instead, Bridgetown Races is more of a puzzle style game in which players are attempting to, I guess, beat each other out to different locations, but you're trying to really think the best way. Maybe more of a maze style game. It's very interesting. Uh, it's definitely not going to be a game that everyone enjoys, and although it looks like it is. Outstanding presentation, outstanding board, and all that. We'll, we'll take a look at it and I'll explain why I feel the way I do. Here we see the board in which players will be racing across around town here trying to cross different bridges. A flag is placed on each bridge. A blue flag is placed here on the steel bridge. The other bridges will never be blue. They're placed randomly and so different colors will be placed there uh, as the game starts out. And so the game takes place in five rounds which is measured by this boat going down the river which is actually a pretty neat and thematic way. That's one of the things I really did enjoy about the game. They found a good way to show the rounds. Players are then given tokens or coordinators of their color. You get four. One to keep in front of you so everyone knows who you are. Ha ha! And the other three will be placed on this board. Now this is the focal point of the game, this board, so let's look at it. Players will be putting tokens on this board in turn order. So they can put them on car, bus, bicycle, blading, walk, streetcar, motorcycle, taxi. If I put one there, another player can also put his on car. That's not a problem. In fact, up to all four players can put theirs on one person. There's three things here in the middle, double, first, and swap. And you can put yours on one of those if you want. And if you do that, no one else can do those. After everyone has put these on there, you're then going to take the one that you have in front of you. And it's going to actually start the race. So let's look and see how a race works now. The race starts here, where conveniently it says start. On your turn, you can take one of these people off here, and that's how far you can move your piece. So let's say, for example, I take this one off a of bus. Bus says three, so I can move my racer three spaces. Here, car says three. If I take mine off of car, the black piece off of car, I get three, but I also get a bonus three for each piece there, plus three. So I'll actually be able to move mine six. Now you can see here that the walk is one, blading's two, bicycle's two, bus three, car three, taxi, motorcycle are four, and streetcar is five. So why won't you just take streetcar all the time? Well, because there are some restrictions on movement. First of all, streetcar can only ever be used on the streetcar spaces. Or if you start next to one, uh, like over here, then you can go on the streetcar spaces. Secondly, when you there's a lot of spaces here. Let's focus up uh, right here. You can see here that this road crosses this road. The only way to get down is to take that walkway and you can only do that if you're walking. But most importantly, the only way to get a flag when crossing a bridge is if you are currently in that mode of transportation when crossing a bridge. So when I cross this bridge right here, I can only get it if I walk across. While this one I can get if I blade across and the green one I can get only if I'm in a car. Once you get a flag, you will then place that flag on your board. So let's look at the board here. Each board shows all the bridges in the game. You'll take the flag, let's say I take it off Burnside Bridge, and I'll put it there. And I'm trying to get as many flags as possible. Once I get that flag, no one else is going to be able to go on that bridge this turn. We'll add new flags to the bridges between the turns. But as I'm grabbing the different flags, I'll place them on the bridge. If for some reason, in a later round, I get a flag at the same bridge, I'll knock off the first one and put the new one there. My goal is to get as many different colors as possible. Or don't worry about colors and get all eight bridges. Getting all eight bridges in five rounds, especially with more than two players, is fairly difficult, but if you do that, you win. Otherwise, whoever has the most different colors on different bridges is the winner. I did mention there's these other spaces here real quickly. If you put yours on first, then you get, you get to go before whoever has the first place token. You get to move first. If you put yours on double, you can pick one of these and you move double that number. And if you put yours on swap, then you can take any two bridges on the board, except for the blue bridge, 
and you can swap them, which can have a bearing on strategy. I don't really know what to make of this game when, it, when, I, when I sit down and just think about do I enjoy playing it. On one aspect, I really like it. It has, it has similarities to Robo Rally, um, Factory Fun, and other games where you're trying to set your moves up in advance. And just like Robo Rally, your moves can be completely wiped out by someone else. You know, for example, if you say, I'm going to go here in the car, and then over here in the taxi, then I'm going to cross that bridge by walking it. And on the first turn, someone else does something, and they zoom over there and grab that flag. Or they switch to flags, and that totally messes up your plans. And in, in Robo Rally, it can be funny, and you can catch up and all. Here, if you mess up on a turn and someone else doesn't, they've won. There's only five rounds in the game. So there's that. And so everyone's looking at the board, trying to figure out the best moves. And then you can get in positions as the game progresses where you really cannot do anything. For example, if it's the fourth or fifth round, and I have two flags less than you due to mistakes in previous rounds, there is no way, if you, for example, can grab a flag in your turn, there's no way I'm going to be able to make some super move and grab three flags. At least not in a three- or four-player game. In a two-player game, yes. And in fact, maybe that's what this game is best played as, two players. Because in a three- to four-player game, the chance of someone else taking your flag, the chance of someone switching flags and messing up everybody is very high. So, presentation, great. One of the nicest-looking games. And thematically, a lot of it works. I like how the board was made, and there's that streetcar that goes around, and you can walk up certain spots. Good. Good presentation, good theme. I like the thinking aspect of it, but the actual execution of that just doesn't really gel out. You know, you're moving around the board, and, and it's a neat idea, but it almost seems like it would work better as kind of a solitaire game. Can you think plot the quickest path around the board? And, and this is weird, because coming from someone with Robo Rally, it's the same thing, but Robo Rally, you're always getting messed up by other players, but there's always a way to recover. There's always a way to come back. Here, it's really difficult to recover. So, uh, I don't dislike it. I have a good time playing it, but I'm not going to keep it, because there's just not a subset of people that are really going to enjoy the game. People who are puzzly are going to be frustrated by the randomness. People who don't like puzzles are going to be irritated by how much they have to think to set up their turns. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.